I all my brethren who are listening me from far and near on this remote platform once again I greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this evening. Welcome back to our studies on Christian Assembly episode number 12. In the last class we have been meditating upon the figures of the Church of Jesus Christ as to four figures are given in the Bible. They are respectively the habitation of God, the temple of God, the house of God, and finally we have learned the body of Jesus Christ. The habitation of God, the temple of God, the house of God, and the body of Jesus Christ. In the last class, I discussed about the house of God, depicting from 1 Timothy all the six chapters of the epistle of Timothy, picturing into each of the rooms of life, typically the welcoming room, as well as the prayer room, the <clears throat> chapter 3, the elders and ministers room, and then preaching room, storeroom and finally the room for the rich where we stopped in the previous class and today let us let us go into uh, the last figure in this connection which is the body of christ ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 16 and also verse number 1 verse 23 and colossians 2 18. first of all i would like to read Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16 in this connection and chapter 11 verse 11 to 16 we read and he gave, he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors some some teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Here you just notice the word, the phrase, the body of Christ is mentioned by Apostle Paul. And then verse number 13 tells us, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And verse number 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness by which they lie in way to deceive. But speaking the truth in the love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. And then last verse 16 from whom the whole body, listen again, the phrase Paul uses here, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Also in 123, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, Paul again says, which is his body and he has put all things under his feet. Here he is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all the things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills uh, all in all. There also we read the phrase repeatedly used, uh, the body of Christ. And together with this, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18, where also Apostle Paul mentioning about the body concept, chapter 2 verse 18, where we read, Let no one defraud you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and uh, not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body nourished and knit together, by joints and ligaments, increases with the increase which is from God. 
all these three references which we have read this morning this evening we have noticed the holy spirit of god has used the word or the phrase the body of jesus christ the church which is formed in the day of pentecost by the baptism of the holy spirit comprises all believers who are connected to each other as well as to christ himself in this spiritual unity all the believers of all this church age are connected to each other as members in the body of jesus christ putting all together into one body relationship by the baptism of the holy spirit 1 corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 several times we have meditated upon that particular words which paul speaks about us uh, make you forming the one body relationship uh, with the head which is the lord jesus christ verse number 13 paul says for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body whether jews or greeks whether slaves or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit here the one baptism which is mentioned by paul is speaking about the baptism of the holy spirit which had taken place in the day of pentecost it was by the baptism of the holy spirit of god that one body uh, which is the church was formed in the face of the earth the statue which nebuchadnezzar dreamed was made up of five different materials we are in the book of daniel that the statue which nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon who so was made of five different materials which had no life with it but the church of jesus is a living body the bible very strictly and clearly tells us that the church is not an organization but it is a living organism today we have so many sectarians in christendom which are all of them which have their state president or national president or international director and then general pastors overseers as such but the bible says these all are organizations the church of jesus christ is not an organization but which is a living organism which is comprised of born again members from different tribes kindred nations and languages the glorified christ is the head of the church which is his body so there is a right relationship with the body and the lord jesus christ christ has introduced introduced himself as the head of the church and we the born again believers are the members of that body constituting to one body relationship which is a functional organism the power which raised the lord jesus christ from the grave of the joseph of arimathea that jesus is described in ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 and as the apostle paul explains in ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 we read that the spirit of the father which raised up the lord jesus christ from the tomb of joseph of arimathea chapter 1 verse 20 i would read for your reference which he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in the heavenly places and this power is called the power of the holy spirit of god the bible explicitly tells us that jesus christ was offered up by the eternal spirit and the same spirit raised him up from the dead according to ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 with the same power the power of the holy spirit we are also quickened from our transgressions and sin ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says that we who were dead in trespasses and sins were being quickened and raised by the same spirit which raised, raised up the lord jesus christ from the tomb and also therefore the head and body are neatly connected each other and has formed a functional organism the body is oriented all its vitality 
from the head which is the Lord Jesus Christ to which the body is neatly connected together. Our physical body is subjected to certain laws, physical laws of nature and it is essential for our physical growth and development. That means each of our physical body is uh, succumbed to or subjected to certain, certain natural physical uh, laws of this physics and uh, it is very essential for our physical growth and development. In the same way, the, our spiritual body is also subjected to certain rules and uh, certain laws which are spiritual. Otherwise, we cannot have pro proper growth and development as to our spiritual nature. Uh, I'll explain it a little more clearer that as our, as our physical body is subjected to certain natural laws for our spiritual devel physical development and growth, the same way our spiritual body is also subjected to certain spiritual laws and rules for its development and spiritual growth. There are altogether five spiritual laws to which the, the Church of Jesus Christ is subjected to, the Word of God tells us. Number one, the law of unity, which speaks as the one body relationship, the law of unity. And number two, the unity in diversity. Number one, the law of unity that speaks about one body relationship. And number two, the unity in diversity. Number three, the law of consideration. Number four, the law of activity. And finally, the law of authority. I will uh, repeat uh, once again that those who are listening to me, please listen to this. There are uh, four, five laws of the spiritual body for development and spiritual growth. Number one, the law of unity, which essentially speaks about the one body relationship. And number two is the unity of the body in diversity. So the law of unity, then the law of diversity, the law of consideration, the law of activity, and then the law of authority. Let me explain first of all, what is the law of unity? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13, we see two sides of the law of unity. They are the law of the unity of faith and the law of the unity of spirit. There are two essential laws which uh, uh, helps the believers to have the law of unity in the body, the body of Jesus Christ. One is the, the, the unity of faith, which is faith in the various doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ. And the latter is the law of the unity of the Spirit. Both are essential for the development and spiritual growth of the body. There are seven aspects which speaks about the unity in the Bible. And uh, I will be explaining all the sevens right now and will close today's class thereafter. So there are seven uh, spiritual aspects which uh, speaks about the unity of the church in the New Testament. Number one, one flock. John's Gospel chapter 10 verse 11. Let me read John's Gospel chapter 10. Where chapter 10 is actually the shepherd chapter wherein our Lord Jesus Christ introduces himself as the good shepherd. He is the door of the sheep. He is the good shepherd who leads the sheep into his pastures and uh, maketh them to lay down by the still waters and in a feeding on a green pastures. And he said, I am the good shepherd and I gave my life for my sheep. And my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. I call them by their name, Jesus said. And all the sheep, putting them together into one, uh, into one unity, he speaks there as the flock of God. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 11 onwards. And I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And also in verse number 14, 
is that I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by uh, them, known by my own. See, in verse number 10 he said, I have come that you may have life, life more abundantly. So in, the, in this verse, John's Gospel chapter 10, Apostle, uh, Apostle John says that we are one flock with the Lord Jesus Christ. As one flock that he gathers us together. Every born again believers, irrespective of sectarian differences as to Pentecostals, Charismatics, Marthomites, Evangelicals, Presbyterians, or CSI, CNI, or even Brethren or Baptist, no matter, we are born again and we are put together as one flock in the uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ, our Chief Shepherd, and we are also put into one body relationship as a functional organism and each member contribute in the body for the common good of the body. So we have the first, uh, uh, the law of unity, the first we have, one flock, which is mentioned in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 11 through 14, which speaks us gathering together. And number two, one family, Psalm number 133, verse number 1. Psalm number 133, verse number 1. Our, the Lord, the, our, we are there pictured as the sheep in the pasture of the Almighty God. I will read also the Psalm number 131, 33, verse number 1, which is speaking together as one family. Okay, let me read that where we read Psalm number 133. 133, it says, Behold, a song of degrees of David, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How good and how pleasant it is the brethren to dwell together in unity. As one flock we are gathered together, and then as one family that we are living together in the house of God. In the last class, I, 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 I explained to you what is the nature of the house of God. Holiness is the basic nature of the house of God. Our unity is its divine manifestation. So as one flock, we are gathering together and as one family, we are living together. In a family or in a house, as I told you in the previous class, there is father, mother and children. The mother and children are in total sublime submission to the father for his authority because he is the head of the house. In the same manner, the Bible says, we as born again Christian believers, we are subjected to the divine authority and headship of our Lord Jesus Christ. We as a spiritual family live, live together under the headship of our Divine Father who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have Ephesians chapter 2 verse 21, the third aspect, one temple, which I have already explained in the last class. Again, I would read uh, today in this connection. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 21, Apostle Paul says, in whom the whole building being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. The Bible says we, the law of the unity is well explained as to, the, as to one flock, which as a flock that we gather together as one family that we are living together and one temple, Ephesians 2.21, that is building together. Each born-again believer is a living stone and the Holy Spirit of God places him and her on the process of the building of the temple of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as one temple, we are being built together. Then number four, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. That is one body, which I already told you, one body was formed by the baptism of the Holy Spirit of God, which took place on the day of Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit of God descended upon 
the disciples who were waiting and watching for the advent of the Spirit asked for the promise of Jesus Christ prior to his ascension. So one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, the, as one body we are organized together. Each of the members, what it may be, its respective place in the body was determined, determined by the Holy Spirit of God. So you cannot go into the body of Christ and take a place and a position as you wish, but rather the one who has saved you, one who has begotten you according to his holy will and desire has placed you in the body of Jesus Christ in a respectful manner. So the place and the, uh, the position that you and I have in the body of Jesus Christ has not been chosen by ourselves but has been given by the divine will of the Holy Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, explain it further. And a fifth aspect, one house, Ephesians 2, 19. As one house, we are working together. Verse number 9 says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the same and a saints and of the household of God, that we who were Gentiles on one occasion, by the grace of God, we have been born again and have been brought into the house of God, wherein we are fellow heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ and sharing in the blessings of the house of our Lord Jesus. And the sixth aspect is one kingdom, Philippians chapter 3 verse 19 and uh, 20. Philippians words, chapter 1 words, uh, uh, one, 19, uh, 3 verse 19 and uh, 20. And this verse is quite familiar to everybody, yet I would uh, like to read it. For our citizen host, uh, verse number 20 it says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. For Paul says that our citizenship is in heaven from whence we are waiting for our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the last word says, who will transform our lovely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. And in the above verse he says, our citizenship is not here, and it is in heaven. Our citizen, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. So, this verse, Philippians chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, speaking about one kingdom. And finally, that is seventh one, one priesthood. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. As uh, one priesthood, we are worshipping the Lord together. In all these seven aspects of references, what we have read, read through, it speaks about the unity in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, where we read, You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So this evening I have told you the law of unity as our physical body is subjected to certain physical natural laws which, is, which are essential for our growth and development and the same way our spiritual body is also subjected to certain uh, spiritual uh, rules or laws which are found in the Holy Bible. Those are very essential for our spiritual development and growth. So such we have five different laws mentioned in the Holy Bible, uh, especially in the New Testament. Number one is the law of unity, and second is law of diversity, and the third is law of consideration, for this law of activity, and the last one is law of authority. Out of the five that the first one we have been studying today, the law of unity. 
according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 that uh, there are two sides of law of unity they are the law of the unity of faith and the law of the unity of spirit one is doctrinal and the other one is practical when putting putting it together that we are having that vital uh, power as a unity law of unity which enables a person to grow up in the grace and uh, having the develop his spiritual development and growth in considering that i told you there are seven aspects which speaks about the uh, the uh, unity of the church one flock as one flock john 10 14 as one flock that we are together flocking together or gathered together the shepherd gathers of the sheep together into the flock so as one flock we are gathered together and uh, psalm number 133 which speaks about one family that we are all living in the house of god the living together and number three one temple ephesians 2 21 that as one temple we all are being built into a holy temple being born again and as a living stones made by the risen lord jesus and fourthly one body one good means 12 verse 13 that is speaking about the mystic body or spiritual body of our lord jesus christ which was formed by the lord spirit of god in the day of pentecost in Acts chapter 2 then we have one house ephesians 2 19 as one house that we are working together and then a one kingdom philippians 3 20 that we are laboring together for the glorious kingdom and finally one priesthood we are worshiping together in first peter 2 verse 5 as one priestly generation thank you for joining with me this evening for this short presentation of the studies in christian assembly and as i told you before this is a systematic presentation of the doctrine and those who are willfully and deliberately committed their lives to listen and to study the word this will more be benefited of them as they continue to attend these classes because all, in all my presentation i systematize it so that my audience may be able to keep them in their mind so that it may be beneficial to them in the days coming for their spiritual development and growth and along with this the other uh, four more we have to consider the law in diverse unity in diversity the law of consideration the law of activity and then finally the law of authority if the lord tarries to come that i i am hopeful that i'll be able to take all those also in the next session of the class and i uh, request you to just take down these notes in a pretty separate notebooks uh, with the references which I mentioned here so that it will help you dearly in the days coming at least you will be able to understand what is the doctrine of the church of Jesus Christ. May the Almighty God bless each of you by the hearing of these words. By the next time I, I request you, you just introduce some others also who wants dearly to learn the word of God in a systematic manner that you can join to me in my Facebook live and immediately after this presentation in a short while this, the entire videos will be uploaded in my YouTube channel ES Thomas live platform you can also rehear the same classes from the YouTube also if anybody wants to contact me on to my mobile number or whatsapp number to know about further details about these classes which i have taken that you are free to contact me on to my number triple nine five seven one five seven zero eight i repeat triple nine five seven one five seven zero eight my email is titus gilead at gmail.com thank you so much for Joining with me this evening, may God bless you all in his blessed service, Evangelist Titus from Edearmla. Thank you. God bless you all.